So welcome everybody to our next session uh, called Putting the Buyers Back into the Account-Based Marketing Funnel. Uh, my name is Dmitry Lisitsky. I'm co-founder and CEO of Info2. And I also have the John Russo here. John, hi. Hi, Dimitri. Uh, John Russo, I'm the founder of B2B Fusion, where we simplify your sales and marketing operations so you can focus on growth. Thank you, John. So the reason why we wanted to discuss the topic of today's conversation is um, uh, coming from uh, the research of Salesforce. Uh, and Salesforce provided very interesting insights in terms of the buyer's expectations and why, why they're not being satisfied with what they're getting. And the key to this research is experience. Uh, and then the experience is very different to what they expect. So if you look at this research, you will see that um, um, you know, having you know, perhaps understanding uh, their you know, buyers and uh, providing meaningful insights and making it personalized is crucial. And then it's very hard to deliver in the real life. So, so buyers end up you know, disappointed and uh, not happy with, with the conversations they receive uh, at the sales processes. And, and then uh, obviously uh, it's, it's ending up with much less results, much less you know, success than uh, you know, organizations expect when they, when they play their sales strategies. And um, you know, I'll pass to John to talk more about uh, his point of view on this topic. Yeah, thanks, Dimitri. We've seen an evolution here with marketing measurement and marketing measurement has been a passion of mine uh, going many, many years back. I've been a former high tech CMO and uh, everybody in marketing right now is in the hot seat to produce measurable results. Serious Decisions has provided some frameworks, now Forrester, that have evolved over the years and evolved from a people based model uh, to an account based model in 2017. And then most recently, uh, another buying group focus in 2021, um, which are really good theoretical constructs. And that's the key thing. I say theoretical constructs. Uh, I've attended 10 of the serious decisions conferences over my career. And in my experience in doing uh, kind of taking their frameworks and bringing it into companies, there's always been a challenge of taking the theory and br bringing it into practice, which I'll share on the next slide. Um, part of the challenge that we've seen in our own organization as we help other companies with their measurement journey is everybody's got a unique go-to-market situation. So they may have leads, they may have partners, alliances, so many different variables that one model doesn't necessarily fit all. Then, as I mentioned to you, um, measurement is really, really challenging because you get multiple different funnels. You can have a lead-based funnel which is in the language of marketing. And that was historically built uh, as a, a person or individual based approach. Well, marketing has their own funnel and then sales has their own funnel. So suddenly you've got two different funnels. And so a big question is, well, how do you operationalize this in a way that both sales and marketing can focus on one unified funnel? It's very challenging to align on metrics and measurement from a sales and marketing viewpoint. And uh, a lot of the account indicators are lagging, uh, lagging in terms of indicators of marketing success. So that too has been problematic. The other challenge out of the box is Salesforce, as Dimitri mentioned in the previous slide, doesn't really account for how the account journey is taking place um, from start to finish in an account, uh, similar to what a lead or a contact person is going through, an account also goes through that. So in the next slide, we endeavored to kind of fix that approach. And uh, there's, there's two aspects of this next slide to consider. One is the hardcore measurement, which I'll dive into in a moment, and it's a bit of an eye test. The second is the insights. So on the first piece, after uh, talking to a number of customers and looking at this model for years, what we figured out was a way to, with a scalable unified approach, take any go-to-market motion and put it in Salesforce. This gives the marketers the ability to measure uh, volume and velocity from start to finish through the funnel, and they can tell and filter by the different channels. So there's a huge marketing benefit to building this type of funnel that accommodates both a lead-based motion as well as an account-based motion. 
What's not on this slide is the insights. And that's what we're here to talk to you today about. So marketers, we're really good at understanding the measurement. And we're really proud when we measure something and we're saying, hey, we're making impact. But think about our sales counterparts. They're struggling to get the insights around their buying committees and really trying to understand who is doing what to whom within an account. So the more insights that you can provide, the better. So by building this architecture in Salesforce, we're able to push some of those insights at the account level so the sales team can engage and then there's a higher level of probability of closing. Um, with that on the insights, I'm gonna turn it over to Dimitri to, to share what he's seen in terms of the evolution of the funnels. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so we believe uh, strongly that, uh, you know, um, what's happening right now is that, uh, um, you know, marketing and salespeople have to rethink uh, their approach uh, to, to the funnel uh, in order to succeed in their alignment. And I think traditionally, uh, before digital times, um, I think the, the real challenge for marketing was to prove they do anything they really help salespeople in some meaningful way besides just bringing you know sales decks and building booths in at, at conferences um and 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 i think with digital times as as we have seen a lot of success uh, with this kind of lead generation strategies that brought you you know you know lots of mkls and marketing could start being responsible for top of the funnel opportunities Everyone, I think, got excited, and I think marketing started to own very specific, you know, metric in their sales and marketing organization, and being accountable for this metric. But that created a lot of um, bad practices and disappointment later, um, because of multiple reasons. Um, one reason is uh, when obviously we have this kind of marketing, you know, marketing handover, handing over their leads to salespeople. Uh, the, there are multiple questions that uh, you know arise uh, w w when this handover happens. The first question is, um, I think the most obvious one is, if if marketing passes their MQLs to to salespeople, they essentially they are not accountable for these opportunities anymore. While salespeople actually need marketing support at this stage even more than before that, because um you know like talking to 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 your leads and talking to your prospects without any mar additional marketing support is, is really tough and painful and you know sell, sales in general is very hard work and and then and, but then from from marketing standpoint you don't want to talk to existing prospects anymore because it will not give you new mkls it's just all the mkls you already put them so so it creates a lot of um um misalignment between marketing and salespeople. Second, um, uh, the, the good question is that uh, I think uh, serious decisions were, were probably the most, um, um, I would say, passionate uh, asking over the last couple of years is, okay, what about other people? If, if you have a champion, somebody inside the organization that is excited and interested in, 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 in some piece of content or, or even in, in to evaluate your product, uh, I don't think you can name a single in an organization where you see one person making decision. So why, what about other people you know, like involved in decision-making process? You don't want to talk to them at all or how, why do you grow them? Uh, you know, if you think about MKLs. And then the third question is, um, um, you know, if, if you lose this opportunity, lose this. So we, we also call it kind of like traditional kind of marketing approaches, the excitement journey, because you, you build up excitement uh, at every stage of the funnel until the person loses their interest. And sometimes it just means that the person was like kind of on vacation or, you know, you know or the content you, you provided to the person or the connection you made to the person was not optimal at some stage. And then this final final thinking assumes you, you lose this opportunity. So you lose this connection. So does it really mean that you want to stop to talking to a top decision maker and large you know, account just because this person lost interest in what you're talking to them uh, over the last couple of weeks? Probably not. So this kind of MKL mentality and this kind of split funnel created a lot of, I would say initially it created a lot of uh, excitement but then uh, we, like we, we have seen a lot of new questions coming in and then the whole idea of you know mkl became very questionable 
Uh, and then um, we basically came up with this idea of you know shared funnel, where you, you basically have marketing and salespeople truly aligned around uh, you know working together uh, to from really top of the funnel to to, to the middle you know the funnel opportunities and even to talking to to existing clients and obviously marketing people can help sales people at every stage including you know retention. Um, and then uh, there are three elements in, in success in this kind of shared funnel approach is uh, first, you, you have to talk to exactly the same people, which is, by the way, not happening in many cases when, when people think about shared funnel. If you, if you just do it on the account level, and I will talk about this a little later, um, it's not good enough. You still want to talk to the same people, not just same accounts, right? So they're same, exactly the same buying, same buyers and the same organizations. Second, um, um, you know, marketing, especially if, if you consider middle of the funnel opportunities, you don't want to, you know, to, to, uh, you know, uh, to, to, uh, to speak, uh, uh, not considering, you know, existing sales contacts that salespeople are having. So obviously you first need to understand what is the context of sales conversation uh, exists with this specific opportunity, this specific person. And then uh, you want to provide the best possible marketing content that fits into this context. And third, um, you know, if you consider marketing engagements, okay, like, like advertising is a good example. People don't click on advertising most of the time. So they don't respond to your effort. And then in the num from number standpoint, what you really see is that out, out of say, you know, 100 impressions you serve, if you have one click, it's perceived to be a very good result, right? So it's like 99% of cases, people just don't click on advertising. So every click matters and every click means the the banner you served to the person was actually meaningful. It, it attracted their attention, they paid attention to it. And then from sales standpoint, you don't want to miss on this signal. This signal is crucial for them. Um, so what we, what we came up, I mean, in the executional level, what you want to do is to, to have this kind of shared funnel where you have salespeople. And then as you like, I, I, I think a majority of kind of larger, especially enterprise focused organizations, they, you know, they have, I would say salespeople um, reclaim their uh, ownership of top of the funnel opportunities. Uh, so sales development, um, you know, teams became much bigger and much stronger especially considering, you know, this, you know, I would say, um, I would say major advances in, uh, you know, sales enabled technologies that really helped um, self development people to make their job really efficient and uh, to scale these programs fairly quickly. So, so essentially salespeople own, own the whole funnel from, from the top or at least participate in major part of activities that are happening from the top of the funnel. Uh, and then uh, marketing people need to provide really meaningful and impactful, you know, support for these activities at every stage of the funnel. And that really depends on the stage. So for every opportunity, every buying team and every person uh, that uh, salespeople are talking to, marketing need to serve their content that is connected to, to the need of this, uh, of, of this stage of the funnel. So essentially, if you consider say sell like really cold leads, really cold opportunities, then you know, self-development people will appreciate any any effort in terms of building awareness. So as, the way our actually our sales development people tell is like it's much easier to talk to somebody who who knows who you are, who knows your company, because uh, you know like uh, even th this kind of little you know little help in terms of building awareness is is changing their life and changing their conversion rates uh, dramatically. And then uh, when it comes to middle of the final situation where when you know, salespeople actively talking to, to, to the buying team, then probably you don't want to build awareness anymore because uh, majority of the buying team already knows about the company. But at this stage, you definitely want to, you know, to, to, to use marketing channels to show, you know, case studies and testimonials and all the great, you know, content that you produce. So, so that while salespeople are talking, uh, same buying team members would see a lot of relevant content that would, you know, build the trust, uh, uh, to your company and then, uh, you know, re reinforce the messages that salespeople are delivering. And then uh, speaking about the buying teams, um, I think also uh, it's 
it's impossible to have uh, uh, good marketing sales alignment if, if marketing just focuses on, on account level, uh, targeting and account-based marketing um, just focused on the account level um, uh, activities. Because uh, as you consider in this example, um, if you just target you know, Microsoft as an account and then which, like you basically try to talk to 163,000 people, which is a lot. It's, it's kind of it's kind of significant town, I would say. Uh, and then uh, in this uh, situation, you might want to have like 20 people buying team. So, so the chances that you hit right people with your marketing campaign are very low. So, you know, just account level targeting and account based marketing is, is not good enough when you consider buying teams uh, because uh, buying teams are much, much smaller. It's still like if you try to talk to 20 people inside uh, that live in the town of like hundreds of thousands of people. Um, so the chances that you, you just go on street and talk to the right person are very low. So you really want to drill down and make your account-based marketing activities much more precise than just targeting accounts. Um, and then from, from inside standpoint, uh, what John uh, mentioned, uh, I think salespeople I really craving for for any indication of of any intent and any you know engagement that marketing people create, and we we use this example uh, of an engaged account where you have three people in the team, and then you have like a team who is like traditional you know demand gen type of um, lead that uh, have seen advertising over the last nine days, and then he suddenly came came to the website, or actually clicked on advertising, came to the website, and then filled out a lead form. And that's kind of straightforward. You know what the person needs. He, he, he just created an inquiry and then the job of inbound SDR who will handle this is pretty straightforward. But then as you pass this engaged account uh, to, 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 to sales development team, you have other people in this group. And then we have Johnny who, who, who clicked on advertising multiple times, visited the website, downloaded content, but never filled out any lead forms so technically, in, in traditional situation, you just have no idea uh, what to talk about with Johnny. And obviously, you want to have kind of person-based approach uh, when you deliver your advertising and marketing, activity, uh, marketing communication because you want to know that Johnny was interested in this specific content and what, what excited him before so that sales development people will know exactly uh, you know, how to engage with him, what are the topics that are relevant for him. And then speaking about Eddie, if they try to reach out to Eddie, then uh, it probably won't be successful because he never clicked on anything. He was not, you know, uh, never paid attention to, to advertising that was delivered to him. So probably they don't, if they touch, I mean, like there's no harm to, to try to talk to this person, but clearly it's a cold, you know, completely cold opportunity. And then you need to be, you know, self development people need to be aware of this as well. So this kind of marketing sales alignment truly happens when, uh, when you have this granular, really detailed um, insights for every person that marketing people are talking to. So just uh, you know, to sum up of what we have so far. Uh, so we have this unified file, you know, John, if you could just provide some ranges. Uh, sure, Dimitri. And just to um, uh, reemphasize the benefits of the unified funnel is you get cleaner, predictable reporting. And uh, really, it, it, it's helpful from a sales viewpoint in that it's providing the insights. So it's not just like marketers, we think a lot about reporting and we need the reporting, but the byproduct is the insights as well. And within that reporting, we're able to share the different metrics of which channels. And when I say channels, it could be inbound, outbound, it could be your partners or alliances. People use the word channels differently, but which channel is performing the best? And therefore, where do you put the investments from a marketing viewpoint? Where do you put uh, the, the targeted efforts uh, to really go after those buying committees, depending on those channels and their performance? And it increases the accountability across the board. Uh, so it, it helps tighten down sales and marketing when you're looking at one funnel as opposed to multiple funnels. And with sales getting valuable insights, they're more incented to, to look at the one funnel as well. Yeah, thank you. And then speaking about the buyer focus, uh, um, I think there are basically three elements that uh, you know, uh, practitioners will, will benefit by doing this is that first you, you have you know, buying committee and if you focus on buying committee, you, you know that you're talking to the right people and then you capture 
100% of the intent because you have this person-based intent data that are crucial to them. And then you can create messages and create your campaigns that are targeted to specific people. So you can choose the right messages, choose the right content that fits into their roles and, 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 and the stage of the conversation that, uh, the, the, that you have right now. And then uh, from sales standpoint, um, it's super crucial to, to understand, to prioritize your uh, effort depending on the engagement level. So you know exactly which accounts and which people actually inside these accounts are most open to, to talk to. And then uh, when it comes to, you know, to, you know connecting marketing and sales activities, for, for salespeople, having these insights is crucial to, to, to improve their conversion rates and in general, kind of make their life easier and, and make, make their results uh, much better. Um, so with that, uh, we, we, uh, we then end our presentation. Uh, thank you, John, for, for, for this uh, very interesting insights. Um, um, and uh, here, here's our details. Uh, so for those who are interested, uh, happy to answer your questions, please you know, write to me. Uh, right to John if you have questions and uh, we are around in this conference uh, we have our booth so stop by if you want to see uh, how our product works and uh, again we're happy to answer your questions. John thank you. Dimitri it's been an honor and thank you for including me in on this. Thank you.